How to Invest in Mutual Funds Step-by-Step -step Guide for Beginners Choosing between active and passive management, where to buy funds, knowing costs, and keeping to a strategy are all important considerations when investing in mutual funds. But what exactly is a mutual fund, and how can you get started investing in one? Hello, this is Financial and Investment Wisdom, your key to financial independence. And we've got another great video for you. Please subscribe to the channel and switch on alerts to receive updates of new uploads. What is a mutual fund exactly? A mutual fund is a type of investment in which investors pool their money to buy stocks, bonds, and other assets. A mutual fund tries to build a more diverse portfolio than an individual investor could. Professional fund managers acquire securities for you in mutual funds. If you want to learn how to invest in mutual funds, start with these seven simple steps. The first step is to figure out what your mutual fund investment objectives are. What financial objectives would you like to achieve through mutual fund investing? Are your objectives merely a few years or decades away? Stock-based mutual funds are a good choice if you're saving for a long-term goal, such as retirement or your child's college tuition. You have plenty of time to invest and ride out the market's inevitable ups and downs. While no investment assures a profit, mutual funds are safer than other options since they invest in a diverse variety of businesses or debtors. A money market mutual fund or a government bond fund may be an excellent alternative if you're saving for a short-term objective, such as buying a home or a car in the next few years. However, innovators who require immediate access to their funds might consider bank account options such as high-yield savings accounts, which are federally insured up to $250,000. Even the safest mutual funds can't guarantee that. The next step is to choose the best mutual fund strategy. You can choose funds with the proper investment strategy geared to your goals once you've determined your mutual fund investing goals long-term goals. When you invest in long-term mutual funds, you have decades to attain your financial goals. To position yourself for the most investment gain, your mutual fund allocation should generally be 70% to 100% in stock-based mutual funds. To invest in companies that are predicted to grow faster than others, seek mutual funds designated growth funds. These funds carry a higher level of risk, but they also offer a greater chance of making substantial rewards. Midterm Goals If investing extensively in stocks makes you uneasy, or if you have a goal within the next 5 to 10 years, you might prefer a strategy that minimizes the risk of quick fluctuations in investment value. Balanced mutual funds invest in both bonds and equities, reducing the risk of investing in stocks. Short-term goals. If you just have a few years until you reach your objective, you should concentrate on avoiding risk so you don't run out of money when you need it. You might put 30% of your money into stock mutual funds and the remainder in bond funds. The bond funds will provide a consistent income stream from interest payments, while the minimal equity component may provide some investment growth. Consider investing in a target date fund if you don't want to deal with the trouble of deciding on a portfolio allocation. Target date funds are designed to provide a full, well-diversified allocation of equities and bond holdings for a certain year in the future when the investor must withdraw their cash. The fund invests more in riskier assets, like equities, the further away it is from that date. The fund gradually shifts its holdings to lower risk assets, like treasury bonds, as the goal date approaches. Now is the time to do some research on potential mutual funds. Use sites like the Mutual Fund Observer and Max Funds to find possible mutual funds to invest in. These websites offer thorough information on a variety of mutual funds in a variety of categories. Clients can use mutual fund research tools and screeners on most brokerage websites. 
The following step is to create an investment account. You already have mutual fund access if you join an employer-sponsored retirement plan at work, such as a 401k or 403b. Most retirement plans direct your payments to mutual funds rather than individual stocks or bonds, and you can usually invest in target date funds to automate your portfolio management. If you don't have access to an employer-sponsored retirement account or want to invest for a goal other than retirement, you can open a brokerage account on your own and participate in the following mutual fund plans. Accounts for Individual Retirement Savings, IRAs. Traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs are tax-advantaged investment accounts that allow you to invest in mutual funds for retirement. Taxable Brokerage Accounts. Although taxable accounts at an online broker may not offer the same tax advantages as 401k plans or IRAs, you can withdraw funds at any time without penalty. This makes them ideal for achieving goals before reaching the age of 65, the federal retirement age. Savings accounts for education. You can start a 529 college savings account and invest in mutual funds if you have children and want to prepare for their future tuition. Before we continue our discussion, please hit the thumbs up button and feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. You should now purchase mutual funds shares after opening an investment account. Make sure you have adequate money in your investment account before you begin investing in mutual funds. Keep in mind that investment minimums for mutual funds may be greater than for other asset classes. Vanguard, for example, requires a $3,000 minimum commitment for actively managed mutual funds. Other investments, such as individual stocks or ETFs, do not usually have such low minimums. ETFs and equities can also be purchased at any moment during the trading day. Mutual funds, on the other hand, only trade after the market shuts once a day. This distinction may be irrelevant to people who are investing for the long term and aren't looking to profit from market fluctuations. While mutual funds may lag behind stocks and ETFs, they do have one significant advantage over those other investments. Fractional shares of mutual funds are often easier to get. This implies you can invest any quantity of money rather than being limited to intervals equal to whole share prices. This allows you to invest and grow more of your money in the market sooner. While fractional investing with ETFs and stocks hasn't been possible in the past, an increasing number of brokerages and micro-investment platforms are allowing clients to buy half shares of ETFs and specific equities. Now, make a plan to continue investing regularly. For most people, investing isn't a one-time event, and if you want to build wealth or achieve financial goals, you'll need to develop a strategy for continuing to invest. Your brokerage trading platform can let you set up daily, weekly, or monthly recurring investments so you don't have to remember to deposit money into your account every time you wish to trade. This not only helps you increase your money, but it may also help you spend less on each share thanks to a strategy known as dollar cost averaging. You lessen the risk of buying a large number of mutual fund shares when prices are extraordinarily high by investing a specified dollar amount every month. On the other hand, because you're investing a certain amount of money, when prices are low, your money buys more shares. This may lower the average price you pay per share over time. You should also make a plan to review your investments at least once a year. This will allow you to rebalance your portfolio and ensure that the asset classes still correspond to the level of risk you wish to accept to achieve your objectives. If the notion of portfolio rebalancing seems onerous, consider robo-advisors, which are automated platforms that typically include this activity as part of their management services. Now it's time to think about your exit strategy. You'll eventually need to sell your mutual fund shares to support your financial goals, such as retirement withdrawals. 
When you cash out mutual funds purchased with back-end loading, you'll have to pay a fee to your broker. Unless you held your investments in a Roth IRA or Roth 401k, you'll almost certainly owe taxes on any capital gains. K. Consult a financial counselor or a tax specialist to figure out how to reduce the amount of taxes you may owe on your investments. Keep in mind that while all investments entail some risk, mutual funds are generally thought to be a safer option than buying individual equities. They provide more diversification than holding one or two individual stocks because they hold multiple company equities in one investment. That concludes today's video. We hope you learned something useful to aid you in your journey. Please subscribe to the channel and switch on alerts to receive updates of new uploads. This is Financial and Investment Wisdom, and we'll talk to you again in the next video.